Okay. Sorry about the technical problems. My name is Laura Jones, and um, I'm a educator at St. Mark's Hospital. Um, my background is I am a nurse, and I've been a nurse for about 30 years. Um, but I did get into education um, some years back and um, feel very passionate about exercise and preventative medicine. And so um, if you've attended one of my 101 events before, this is just kind of a continuation of, of that. So today we're going to talk about mountain biking. If you have a question, um, please put it in the chat. Um, if it's relevant to uh, the subject at hand, then um, Andrea or Sadie will kind of um, let me know and then I can answer it right away. Otherwise, we will have a little time at the end to um, take questions. Um, so we'll go ahead and get started. Maybe. All right, here's my disclaimer that this is for educa educational purposes only. It doesn't replace a physician or sports professional assessment, and I have no conflict of interest. We're going to talk about the benefits of mountain biking or review um, equipment in regards to mountain biking. Talk about uh, writing concepts and review some tips and resources. So, um, in regards to the benefits, um, cycling, there actually is a lack of studies specific to mountain biking, mostly because there are so many different types of mountain biking. Um, and so there's a lack of stu study for physical benefits, but not necessarily mental benefits. Um, but research do, researchers do speculate that it has the same physical benefits, if not more, as road cycling. So in regards to just general cycling, um, it does improve your heart health. It, um, it's great for your lungs and circulation. It reduces your cancer risk, specifically colon and breast cancer. Um, it helps prevent and manage chronic illness. So if you have diabetes, it will help you manage that diabetes. Um, and it also, um, the research shows that it reduces your risk of getting di not like diabetes about 40%. Cycling also will improve your muscle strength and flexibility, uh, your posture, balance and coordination. And it's really great for your joints. Um, because it's not a weight bearing exercise. There is, unlike the lack of research on physical improvement, there is an abundance of research on how mountain biking actually improves mental health. Um, it improves uh, mood and emotional balance, um, self-esteem and confidence, uh, motivation and coping skills. It, there is um, a lot of, in, evidence that talks about how it will decrease um, your worry, your stress, your negative thoughts, depression, mm -hmm. anxiety. Um, and um, there is some recent evidence that talks about a correlation between a decrease in alcohol and drug abuse in relation to mountain biking, which is in this society where we're having a lot of opioid um, crisis, um, important, I think. Um, interestingly enough, um, women who mountain bike actually do it for the improvement in mental health, and they found that they um, have that translates into other areas of their life. So um, self-reliance, self-esteem, um, and life satisfaction. Um, but men typically will, um, and those over the age of 50 will mountain bike for the preventative reasoning rather than um, the other reasons. So I wanted to talk a minute about um, mountain biking versus road biking. Um, and mountain biking versus road biking is similar to like um, a regular car to an ATV or a UTV. Um, mountain biking uh, frames and bikes will have knobbier tires, uh, stronger frames. They'll typically have like a suspension either in the front or the back or both and um, stronger brakes. It's, it's kind of built for the uh, constant pounding. Um, things that differ from road biking um, that, that mountain biking um, 
the benefits with mountain biking is that it offers actually a full body workout because of the varying terrain um, and having to maintain control and withstand jolt. That's what um, increases the the full body workout. You have to have a core, your, you know, your core is trained as well as your upper body where you don't get that benefit necessarily with road biking. Um, there is a natural um, uphill downhill typically with mountain biking. Um, so there's a natural interval workout. Um, because of the terrain, you actually ha have an improvement in your coordination and your decision making skills uh, because of that constant mental effort to overcome those barriers. You do have a higher roller resistance. Your tires are wider, they're heavier. Um, more resistant on the surface. So, so it can, it is quote unquote more difficult um, than road bicycling. Um, so definitely in a different context. Uh, the curvy nature of single track trails, um, you frequently have to accelerate and decelerate. And physics um, tell you that startup force is at least two times um, the maintenance force. So that's kind of um, a, a portion as well. And really for all of these reasons, it's it's kind of generally accepted that mountain biking is more strenuous than road cycling. Um, but mountain biking is easier on the back because you're in a more upright position. So if you can kind of see um, the picture on the left versus the picture on the right, um, road biking, typically, you're trying to be more aerodynamic to increase your speed, and so you'll be more hunched. Um, and the final difference, really, between mountain biking and road biking is that you are generally dealing with flora and fauna rather than auto pollution. So you've got some benefits there. There's a lot of evidence that supports added physical and um, psychosocial benefits related to being out in nature. Um, outdoor environments are more therapeutic than indoor environments. And there's a kind of a synergistic benefit of exercising and being exposed to nature, um, which results in a greater benefit than any, you know, either by itself. Um, so decreased systolic blood pressure um, related to nature, uh, stress levels, um, deactivated sympathetic nervous system, which is your uh, fight and flight um, system. It improves your immune system and your psychological well-being. Um, and the reason that is, is because you're out in the natural elements. You are participating in a physical activity, which naturally restores mental and emotional health. Um, perhaps you're um, cycling with uh, social contacts. Um, and they have found that the health benefits um, and mental benefits actually start immediately and increase during the activity um, up to a week um, afterwards. You can still have the benefits of that. Um, um, those who um, um, exercise in nature as well are more likely to meet the recommended physical activity level and more most likely to repeat the um, the exercise as well. All right, now that we've discussed the benefits, we're going to cover the basics. So, I thought this history was kind of, as I was doing some research, I found this history I thought was um, extremely interesting. So I kind of just wanted to spend a minute on that. The bike actually was invented in 1871. It was initially developed as a practical means for transportation, not necessarily for recreation. Um, but the lack of paved roads at that time, um, really bicyclists were off road cyclists as well. Um, as the U.S. became more urbanized, um, bikers in the 1950s formed clubs and modified bikes to get away from the roads because of the urbanization. Um, There's a gentleman named John Finley Scott, who was a professor at the University of California at Davis, um, that made the first known mountain bike in 1953. And this picture is a picture of that quote unquote mountain bike. Um, with knobbier tires and gears, and he used it to explore the mountains of Northern California. Um, 
modern um, mountain biking came to fruition in 19 in the 1970s in San Francisco. And if you've ever been to San Francisco, you've got a big city, but then you have a lot of wilderness um, surrounding it and a lot of network of trails. So um, people in that area would convert regular bikes to mountain bikes. And eventually those individuals, um, you know, started their own mountain bike companies. In the 1980s, um, all major cycling brands had a mountain bike product line. Um, at that time, about 1% of the 9 million bicycles sold in, in that year were mountain bikes. But today, um, about a quarter of all bicycles sold in the US are mountain bikes. And mountain biking is actually um, currently one of the fastest growing recreational activities. Um, they're showing that it's um, increasing and growing about 10% uh, annually. Um, um, and then the other interesting fact that I found is that um, a lot of mountain bikers don't just do it for recreational, they'll actually take vacations. Um, and the, the top mountain bike destination in the US is actually Moab. So mountain biking doesn't necessarily involve mountains. It's really any off-road biking. The two types that we're going to talk about today are cross country and um, downhill. Um, these are not the only two types. There's things called trail and enduro and free ride and dirt jumping and all mountain. Um, but these are the most two common ones. And the other types are typically not for beginners. Um, so that's why we're going to kind of focus on these two. Cross country really is if you're starting out. You think hiking, but on a bike. It's a, it's a mixture of up and down hills. Um, it's less technical, it's mellow in grade. Uh, you don't necessarily require advanced skills or high level of fitness. And you still get the benefits of being in nature. Um, the other benefit with cross country versus downhill is that significantly less injuries, uh, 1.5 injuries per 1,000 rider days versus the downhill, which is 40 injuries uh, per 1,000 rider days. And downhill is exactly that. You get to the top of a ski lift or car and bike downhill. Um, it's definitely much more technical, more dangerous due to that steep terrain because you have obstacles. Um, and it's best actually with a specific bike that is built for downhill. Um, my, uh, the very first time that I went mountain biking, I had a group of friends that invited me to go and um, I had, you know, biked on roads and, and done all sorts of different physical activity, um, but I was not prepared for the technical aspects of the downhill. So I borrowed a bike and I went with this group of friends and um, it, I don't want you to repeat the same mistake. So um, unless you are very skilled and have already done some cross country um, mountain biking, um, I don't recommend um, starting with downhill at all because um, of the speed and having to be agile. Um, so learn from my mistake and uh, don't just have that be your first experience. So I saw something jump up on the chat about, can you use the same um, bike for both? Um, there is a, a bike, and we're actually gonna talk about frames in just a minute, um, that's kind of a, a bike that you could use for both, but if you are more serious about downhill, um, the best would be a downhill bike. And I'll talk about the difference and actually show you some changes and differences between the frames. All right, um, the type of trails, um, really your skill and comfort will dictate where you ride. Um, there's something called single track, which is um, means that it's a trail that's about two to five feet wide. It's uh, one way travel um, where other riders may pass. Um, it's windy. And then there's something called double track, which is double the width or more, where like two bikes could ride side by side. Um, those double tracks are typically trails that follow old roads where tires created two single tracks or um, it's an old um, gravel road. 
um, it's definitely typically um, a gentler grade and less technical. So um, I would recommend starting on a double track. Um, there are mountain bike terrain parks, and I'll talk about that in a, in a minute, but they grade um, trails by color. And so if you're a beginner, you should be doing green trails. Um, blue is for intermediate and um, black and red are more advanced and expert. So these are the three types of mountain bikes. So this may answer your question if it doesn't. Um, you can ask, you know, something more specific, um, but really what type of bike you ride di is dictated by where you plan on riding. Um, there is a cross country um, specific bike. Um, and if you actually look at the pictures um, in the front um, portion of the frame, it looks like a triangle so that the picture on the left looks like a, a normal size triangle. But then as you look at the, the picture for trail and the picture for downhill, it kind of alters um, the look of the frame. Um, and that's based because of what you're doing. So really cross country um, is great for longer distance, um, efficiency, um, as well as climbing. The frames are really light um, and the geometry really is close to a road bike. Um, the trail bike is a great all rounder. So if you were going to be riding on a variety of trails, um, this would be the one that I would choose um, because it's great for climbing. It's capable of descending. Um, it does have a lot of stability. And then the downhill is designed more for steep obstacle filled terrain um, and jumps and is not great for climbing. So really the type is based off of what you um, are planned to do. Um, I definitely recommend learning on a rental and trying different um, trails or trying different bikes out. You can rent a bike for a day. Um, if you end up liking mountain biking or liking a certain type, then you can actually invest in a used or new bike that, that is specific for you. All right, um, frame size. Mountain bikes are sized in inches where road bikes are actually sized in centimeter, but it's sized basically exactly the same way. You go uh, based off of your inseam, which is kind of from your crotch down to the, to the ground, and then you take that in inches and times it by 0 0.67, and then you get what's called a bike seat tube um, length. Um, and that is what you, you know, you focus on. Um, now, different manufacturers, this is just an example of, um, you know, a small, extra small, medium, large, extra large, based off of the seat tube, but not every manufacturer is going to be exactly the same. So like a 17 may be a medium in one manufacturer, but it may be a, a, a large in another. So really you need to focus in on that bike seat tube. And the other thing that you can't necessarily go off of height is because sometimes people have long torsos and short legs or long legs and short toes, torsos. That's why you don't necessarily go off of height. You go off of your inseam. So I definitely um, recommend making sure that you're getting the right size. You could consider uh, a bike fitting. So bike shops can kind of help you fit a frame. Me they measure um, multiple things. Um, your arms and your torso and your inseam. Um, and if you have a bike actually properly fitted, it's been shown to reduce um, injury. Um, so that's definitely the, the benefit of that. All right, there's also three types of wheel sizes. Um, so it gets kind of complicated. So there's 26 inch, 27 and a half and 29. Um, the, the benefits and differences with, with those is a 26 inch is really maneuverable. It's very responsive. It, it doesn't soak up bumps um, as easily um, as a bigger wheel, but it does weigh less. Uh, a 27 inch is kind of a great middle ground, kind of like a trail bike between um, the, two di the three different types of wheel size. So it's between the 26 and 29. And so this is kind of the best of both worlds. 
uh, it re rolls over uh, terrain a little bit easier, but is more maneuverable than the largest size, which is the 29 incher. The 29 incher is heavier and slow to accelerate. The, the wheels roll over obstacles really easy, um, but really it's best for kind of a downhill. Um, Then we have suspension. I mentioned sometimes you would have a suspension in the front, sometimes in the back, or, you know, there's really either you don't have suspension, you have suspension in the front, or you have suspension in both um, front and back. Um, the rigid, the no suspension is really easy to maintain and is the lowest cost, but you're going to feel it on the trail. Um, they have what's called hardtail, which means you have front suspension, but not in the back. And that absorbs impact on the front wheel, um, but it's kind of, again, one of those middle ranges where it absorbs the impact um, so it's not as um, jolting, um, but it's still lighter weight and it's not as expensive as a full suspension bike. Um, the full suspension has the suspension both on the front and back, and both absorbs the impact of the trail and increases your traction. However, full suspension bikes don't climb well. Um, they're heavy and they're very expensive. So um, really that's that downhill riding again. Um, suspension typically needs to be set and that's not something that we can talk about in um, Mountain Biking 101, um, but it's based off of rider's weight and manufacturer. So if and when you buy a bike, it would need to be set. Um, for by the manufacturer's guidelines. Um, the height of your seat should be um, really the best way is to stand on the side of your bike. Um, your seat should be about hip level. If you get on, make sure that you have a slight bend in the knee. So this picture shows that, you know, the one, the picture on the left is too much bend. The picture in the middle is, you know, you're, you have no bend and you kind of like want it kind of in the middle, um, middle range of those two. So the one picture on the right is the best um, length. So again, make sure it's at up your hip, jump on the bike. And then if your knee is slightly bent, you're in good shape. It's, it's set where it needs to be. Um, mountain bikes do have um, what's called a dropper seat. Um, and so some mountain bikes will have that option where basically you you click um, and it will drop it out of the way. And that's just for more technical. Um, not every mountain bike has that. And we'll you'll see the benefits of that a little bit later. Make sure that you buy a mountain bike specific helmet. Um, they actually cover more of your head for more protection. There's plenty of venting, but um, it mostly will cover the back of your head. Um, your front should be level is how you should wear it. And just like in the picture, the side strap should kind of come to a point below your ears. Your chin strap um, shouldn't be tight um, on your chin. There should be about a half inch play. Um, and it, Really, you need to take helmets seriously. Um, downhill, they actually um, have full face helmets. Um, so you just don't want it too loose. And in the event that you have an impact or crash, you actually should replace your helmet. Before you go biking, there's three areas that you really need to check your bike just to make sure it's functioning appropriately. One of the, the biggest mistakes that people make in riding is with is riding with the wrong pressure. So if you set your air pressure too low, your tires are prone to puncture. And if you set your tire pressure too high, you may lose traction and find it hard to control the bike. Um, so this is definitely different than road biking. Um, so you kind of want middle ground. Um, the recommendation, um, it, that I recommend is to have your front tire filled to about 20 to 25 PSI. That gives you really good grip and control. Um, and then your rear tire has, um, have it be a little bit higher, about 28 to 30 PSI, just because the rear tire is at the highest risk of being punctured. 
Um, and so you need to have it a little bit higher, um, filled a little bit higher. The other things that you need to kind of um, make sure is okay is your brakes. Um, your brake is actually controlled with one finger. So there's just a little bit of a, uh, so that brake lever needs to be about the level of your first knuckle. So that's where it should kind of fall. Um, and then that's how you're going to squeeze it. Um, so make sure that that brake is falling in the right spot. Your finger should always be on the brake on both sides. And then the other is your chain. Just make sure that it's free of dirt and rust and uh, oiling it every other ride is best practice. In regards to clothes, you don't have to necessarily wear special cycling gear, um, but you do. I do recommend having a breathable top that has that has some moisture wicking properties and absolutely avoid cotton because it can really um, chafe, cause um, chafing. So if you, I recommend having tight close fitting um, items, avoiding pants um, and because of the risk of it getting caught in the chain. Um, I actually recommend using tennis shoes um, with kind of a protective, like um, toe toe and a good grip and not using clipless systems when you are just learning mountain biking um, it's called a clipless system but it's actually clips in and out and if you use one of those there's actually your reaction time is higher um, and so when you're just learning if you use the platform pedals with just the um, you know tennis shoes then your reaction time is going to be um, be better rather than slower using the clipless system. Once you get used to mountain biking, then you can certainly go to the clip um, system. Um, I do recommend um, cycling shorts just because of it includes a chamois that kind of helps um, reduce um, chafing and trail impact. Other necessities for mountain biking, you, you need water for hydration. Um, whatever amount you drink at home, um, carry twice as much on your ride. Um, and really riding on um, this difficult terrain can make water bottles, uh, trying to navigate water bottles really difficult. And so this picture shows um, a hydration pack um, that you put around your chap, it's chest, it's full of water, and then it has like a little tube that you can kind of turn your your um, head to the to the right or the left and and get a drink while you're actually cycling. So most um, mountain bikers are going to use this versus um, having a water bottle. If you are going to be riding more than 60 minutes, um, you really want to take some sort of a snack. So um, because mountain biking requires a lot of energy, um, glasses are a great idea, um, tinted especially, so you're not uh, have the sun glaring at you. Um, cycling gloves, I recommend a full glove. They actually come in two versions, a half um, that show your fingers and then a full version that covers your fingers. Um, the, the benefit of the full glove um, is that, you know, those uh, tree limbs or branches um, that come out to grab you, um, it's kind of a protection against that. And the reason you'd want gloves in the first place is cycling can be difficult and a lot of pressure can be put right here along your palm and that can cause your hands to go a little bit numb. And so having gloves kind of distributes that pressure um, and avoids that. Um, also having some basic repair equipment, you need to know how to change a tire. So if you don't know how to change a tire, you need to have the equipment to change a tire. Um, and learn by a video, learn by a friend. Um, when I started um, biking, I literally changed a tire that wasn't flat just so I could do it. So definitely I recommend that. Um, first aid kit. Um, I don't take a first aid kit when I'm road biking, but I do when I'm mountain biking just because I'm further from, from um Civilization, um, it does have a little bit higher incidence of injury, mostly scrapes and, and abrasions and things like that, but it's always a great um, thing to have, um, but you need to know how to use it. And then consider knee pads, really depending on the trail. If you're going downhill, um, I definitely recommend the knee pads. Um, 
just because it helps with grazes and hard knocks to the knees. All right, now we spent some time on the basics. Let's discuss um, how to ride. Um, really, it's important on any exercise routine to start out slow, and it's no different with mountain biking. Um, two distinct qualities are necessary to mountain bike, and that's fitness and skill. So it's important to kind of start that out slow. So if you've never ridden um, a bike before, a road bike um, or a mountain bike, start riding around your neighborhood, um, especially if you're not already physically active. Um, when you can ride about 10 miles, um, then you're ready to advance to um, trails. And I would advance to gravel trails um, to get an off-road feeling without the technical features and then, you know, slowly work up. Um, I definitely recommend considering taking a beginner clinic. They'll help you with techniques um, and it also helps you kind of um, learn how to break and how to go around corners. Um, those are available. Basically, any bike um, shop is going to have beginner clinics. Um, so definitely recommend that. Do um, join, take an opportunity to ride with others. Hopefully not like my friends who took me on a downhill right away, <laughs> but typically um, other riders give great advice and give you some guidance. Um, and really the more you ride, the faster you'll gain confidence in yourself and learn to trust your bike. A big difference between road riding and uh, mountain biking is the amount of movement it that takes place instead of uh, a smooth pedal stroke in an aerodynamic position uh, mountain bikers are constantly kind of adapting to the trail shifting their weight and making small adjustments to kind of keep traction and balance so you want to kind of be loose and not um you know um hold on to those handlebars really tight and have you know straight elbows um you want to not be rigid because then it it will actually if you're too rigid you'll you'll hit something and it will actually divert you in the wrong direction so you want kind of um uh, a light grip instead of um, a tight grip um and the other thing that can happen if you're holding on too tight or if you're tense is that you, it'll lead to like sore arms and hands and shoulders. So just to kind of think loosey goosey, okay? Um, enough to control, um, but not um, too tight. Um, your feet should kind of be flat. Um, the pedal should be on the ball of your foot. Um, don't pedal with your toes, okay? Um, they have um, something called a neutral position, and this picture is a great example of a neutral position. You'll see that her feet are flat um, in three and uh, a three and nine position, um, relaxed with your knee and elbows bent. Her index fingers are covering that brake lever. Her weight's evenly distributed. Um, so this is really great relaxed position, um, and then be able to to adjust when you possibly hit some obstacles. So there's something called the attack position. So you go from the, um, and this is more for technical trails. Um, definitely, again, don't um, hit the technical trails right away, but an attack position is used for downhill or obstacles. And that's a semi standing. So you literally get off of your saddle. So this is the benefit of that drop saddle that I mentioned earlier. Um, and because you can see on this picture, this gentleman has his weight distributed way, way back. It's not over the seat. It's actually over the back tire. And that helps kind of um, keep that traction and keep that weight distribution so you're not going over the handlebars. Um, so hips back, um, bent elbows and knees, your chest down, um, head up, those fingers on the brake levers like always. And really the steeper the downhill, the further back your hips should be over the, the rear wheel. Um, and this is, again, where that seat drop comes into play. Brakes can be um, 
your saving grace or your worst enemy. Um, learning really how to use brakes correctly is important for success. A lot of people think that you should only use your rear brake and then you won't go over your handlebars and that's not necessarily true. Um, the rear brake is on the right and then your front brake is going to be on your left and it's actually best to use both. Uh, many people are scared of using that front brake, um, but bikes are more controlled with both brakes. If you only use the back brake, it actually, um, you'll actually pick up too much speed and you'll skid. So um, fingers, again, should always be on the trigger ready to go. Um, typically, you'll squeeze both of them and then let off the, the front brake. Um, and so b think both and then... Um, Feather is what they kind of call it, the front brake, um, depending on the obstacle. Um, make sure you look ahead. Um, try, uh, you know, you don't want to brake uh, when the ob when you're at the obstacle. You actually want to brake before. Um, and really, there's that balance between braking and traction. If you're not braking at all, you've got a hundred percent attraction. If you're braking, uh, you know, pushing both like 100%, you have no traction. And so you want kind of 50-50 of both. Obstacles, um, looking where you wanna go is really the number one rule. Um, a good example is um, when I, my, I was teaching my twins to um, drive a car, um, they would look just in front of the hood um, and that does not give you good control. And so really the same is true of a mountain bike. It's really easy to get into the habit of staring at the trail just in front of the tire, um, but you're unable to anticipate. Uh, so keep your eyes up, scan the trail, um, and scanning the trail kind of allows your brain to kind of assess all possible routes, um, before the obstacle. So another, uh, good tip is if you're trying to avoid an obstacle don't directly look at it your mind kind of controls your body so wherever you look your body's going to take you there so um, this is one of the most common issues um, beginner beginner mountain bikers have um, an obstacle presents itself um, you kind of get a little scared and you stare at the object and then you end up hitting the object so really that step by step is keep your eyes up you focus further down the trail, not right in front of you. Um, if you identify a hazard, um, choose how to get around the obstacle and then look past the obstacle. Um, you want to break before the obstacle and then ride confidently through the section. Um, because if you uh, decrease uh, your speed too much, um, that you actually increase your risk of getting stuck or falling. Um, Let's see. Uh, rules of the trail. So um, trails have rules, just like driving on the road has rules. Um, rules exist to keep everyone safe. And um, mountain bikers actually share trails with hikers and runners and horses and potentially wild animals. And so the International Mountain Biking Association came up with rules of the trail. Um, and so that's what these are. So this kind of six different um, bullet points. Um, you want to ride on open trails only. Um, don't uh, ride on trails um, that are not approved for mountain bikes. Um, you'll get people pissed off at you if you do. Um, you don't want to trespass on private land either. Um, that whole leave no trace. Stay on the existing trails. Don't create new ones. You don't want to ride on trails that are muddy. Uh, because you'll actually uh, form ruts and ruin the trail. Um, and don't litter. Pack out what you pack in. Another rule is being able to control your bike. Um, being, you need to be, pay attention. Obey the regulations. Um, ride within your limits. You want to yield to others. So one, one of the things is you need to let um, people like hikers know that you're coming so you can yell at them or you can have a bell. Um, mountain bikes, the general rule is that mountain bikes yield to all other trail users unless it's a bike only trail. 
So you would yield to horses and you would yield to um, runners and hikers. Um, the other rule is that bikes going downhill should yield to those going uphill, the uphill bikes, um, because it's harder to get started um, going uphill. So that's kind of the reasoning behind it. Make sure you're courteous. Um, and it's always a great idea to, um, you know, take your bike completely off the trail and give them as much space as possible. We don't want to um, scare animals. Um, animals really are, um, you can you can come up across all sorts of wildlife and you can also come across a lot of horses. So just give animals room to and time to adjust. Um, try to pass if you can. If you can't and they're in the middle of the trail, then retreat and take a break. And when they move on, then you can move on. Um, really take special care in regards to horses. They, they startle easy. And so talk to the horseback rider and take some direction from them. Um, and then plan ahead. Know your equipment, know your ability and the area you're riding and prepare accordingly. Um, so I did talk, I want to talk about injuries just a little bit. And I did say that, you know, there are, um, more injuries with, uh, mountain biking than there is with road biking. Um, you know, but cross countries like that 1.5 injuries per thousand rider days and downhills 40 per thousand rider days. Um, the cross country is really comparable to like downhill skiing, the risk. Um, and then downhills higher risk, but when I say injuries, 90% of injuries are abrasions and bruising and, um, you know, things that are affecting the extremities that are not fractures. And then the other 10% are more serious injuries. So like a fractured clavicle or a fractured finger, um, a concussion, um, you know, a back injury, um, but like I said, the majority of the injuries are going to be um, your skin. Um, women actually suffer more fractures and back injuries than males just because they're lighter. Um, and women will tell you that they got injured because they overexerted themselves or they didn't know their, their limitations. But men typically will get injured because they take um, risky behavior or excessive speed. So in regards to safety, uh, you know, a combination of, of too much speed and some shifty terrain can be for a dangerous ride. So um, these are some things that can really help you um, decrease your risk. Um, one of them is knowing your risk factors. Um, if you have a pre-existing chronic medical condition, talk to your physician. Um, make sure you choose the appropriate route um, that's at your fitness and experience level. Again, green uh, trails. Um, and then slowly work up. Make sure you stay focused. Um, you need to be in complete attention when you're mountain biking um, so because of the hazards. Um, take a partner. It's actually, um, like I mentioned before, um, an unknown trail is more likely to cause an injury. Um, being by yourself um, is increases your risk for injury. And really, if you watch others, um, and then you perform the skill next, you you really can, um, that improves your confidence and your ability. If you're by yourself, let someone know where you're going to be and how long. Um, know whether, what's the weather for the day. Um, and wear proper gear um, and have that first aid um, to treat skin and musculoskeletal injuries. We're just wrapping up here, some tips and resources. Um, really how to be successful, um, knowing your limits. Fear is, is your survival instinct kicking in. So fear can kind of help you stop from attempting things outside your skill level. Um, but the boys especially need to be smarter about that. Um, Higher speed comes higher consequences. So stick to the trails within your skill, skill level and, and slowly uh, progress. Uh, so you really kind of want to balance that fear. 
yet um, also push yourself a little bit. Um, start small with technical features, maybe just outside your comfort zone and work your way up. Um, you can ride trails that are challenging. And if you're uncomfortable, um, pick up your bike and walk that segment of the trail and then get back on your bike. So there's always that option. There is no shame in that. Um, like I mentioned earlier in the presentation, you can attend a beginner clinic that will help with your technical um, ability and um, definitely recommend joining a mountain bike club um, that gives you a group to go with and, um, and it's kind of a social aspect. There are actually three local cycle parks here in the Salt Lake area. There's the Draper, Draper Cycle Park, which is um, west of the Equestrian Center on Highland Boulevard. Um, it's got some single track. It's got a skills practice zone. Um, it's got some areas of short downhill trails. Um, so that's a great option, um, especially if you're trying to learn how to um, overcome obstacles. There's the Nine Line Bike Park that's on the corner of 700 West and 900 South. Um, it's got some easy, medium, and difficult obstacles. Um, and that is a really close to the Jordan River Parkway um, paved trail. So if you're learning to, to bike, it's just a quick, easy um, down the street um, to go, you know, practice some obstacles. And then the last one is the I Street Bike Park. This is on uh, in the avenues on I Street and 18th Avenue. This is actually not a maintained uh, park by the city. Uh, the riders actually maintain it. So if you um, end up going to the I Street Bike Park, know that, that they're you're expected to kind of give back to maintain the trails. It only actually has one beginner track. Um, the rest are more e intermediate and advanced. So just know that that there is limited um, for the beginners there, um, but it is really close to the um, Bonneville Shoreline Trail. And here's my resources. Um, Really, the IMBA is the International Mountain Biking Association. Um, it has, it advocates for mountain biking trails. It has a blog. You can find a local um, club there. There's something called Single Tracks. Um, that is a website. You can find trails all over the world. Um, doing a search there. Um, it does also have some blog and resources there. Um, the MTB project and MTB stands for mountain bike, mountain biking project. This is um, actually managed by REI and you can find trails in the US. They also have a free app um, and that you can utilize um, finding the trails. And then the last resource is Utah mountain biking. This is a list of local trails. It only is online, but they do have a ton of resources there and videos that can help you um, you know, give you some direction with mountain biking. And here's all my references. And I will be happy to take questions. Laura, I can't see the questions that came to the host only. So if you'll look in your chat, you probably have more questions. I think you've answered all the ones that I've seen. Okay. I don't have any more. All right then. Well, thank you everyone for coming and thank you, Laura. This has been a great presentation and I appreciate you uh, helping out with the technical difficulties at the beginning. Okay. okay. All right, thank you so much. Thank you. Um, do you want me to just stop this recording then? Yeah, just go ahead and stop the recording.